One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Good morning, guys. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the Hague Report. So, hey guys, I'm James Hake. This is the Hake Report. It is Thursday, October 10th already, 2019. 9 a.m. live in the fourth hour of Jesse Lee Peterson's stream. Thank you, Jesse. And thank you guys for continuing to tune in. We are live on YouTube, Periscope. Shout out to Periscope. I see you guys. Um, Mixer and DLive.tv. Shout out to DLive. You got lemons. I think Je- Joel's gonna read your lemon report. Did you? You know, I don't think you read the treasure chest op- results. Did you? I did. Oh, he did. Congratulations, guys. And um, you can also do super chats, not just from lemons, not just on on lemons, ice cream, diamonds, ninja guineas, and ninjets on D Live, but also via Streamlabs. You can donate via Streamlabs. And the link is in the description of the Jesse Lee Peterson's video, for YouTube anyway. So guys, I wanted to ta- tell you, like, correct some fake news, just uh, basically about the terms that they're using in this heavy article about Stefan Bail- Stefan Baliet, something like that. And that's the guy who shot up and killed a couple people over in Germany, and it was on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is like the most important Jewish holiday in their minds. They don't realize that Jesus came. They don't realize that the Messiah came. But anyways, I also want to talk a little bit about these these Kurds. Bailet. Bailet is how one person said it. Is the guy's last name. He survived, by the way, because he didn't want to die. (laughs) Uh, The whites are cowards. (laughs) Uh, they probably are not pumped up on drugs either because the ISIS terrorists I hear is That they get on like heroin or something so that they're pumped up and then they have like Druggy bravery to go commit like a suicide bombing or something like that Go kill kill a bunch of people and get killed, but these guys these white terrorists they, They're like, oh, I'm gonna go down <laughs> You know the I'm laughing just because of, like, they, they're not as brave as they think they are. The El Paso shooter, he was like, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna get captured. <laughs> and then, sure enough, he turned himself in. What an idiot. But, um, Satan is busy in the minds of all people, right? Um, by the way, we are on bit shoot. Bit shoot. B-I-T? Bit? Shoot. C-H-U-T-E. Bitshoot.com slash Jason Lee Peterson. It's the biggest channel. Very nice. Thank you guys for supporting and um, subscribing. You know, it's just a good, it's a good alternative place to watch our uploads. When we have four channels, including mine, uh, the, the Fallen State on BitChute, Jesse Lee Peterson on BitChute, Bond, Rebuilding the Man on BitChute, and The Hake Report, of course, for the uploads. Not necessarily the live streams, although BitChute is good to Jesse Lee Peterson's channel. They upload his live streams even. Four hours of content they upload, at least last time I checked. That's nice. But um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about these Kurds before I get into this German guy, or whatever he is, who was living with his mother. He should have been listening to the Jesse Lee Peterson show and forgiven his mother. Then he wouldn't be uh, wanting to kill as many anti-whites as possible. Because that only makes it worse for the whites. I know he wants... Some of these people are so-called accelerationists, I think is a term that they use, where they want to accelerate the attack on white people so that more white people wake up to the notion, the reality that they are under attack, and then they get mad and, like, start a whole race war. That's what some of them want. Not a good idea, though. They just basically don't believe in God, is the problem. Like, there are ways to win without resorting to that. Resorting to evil. Anyways, um, oh, by the way, 
before I get to the Kurds or this German guy or anything, I have some super chats from Sunday that I forgot to read. <sighs> Fired. Let me read them real quick, real fast, because I appreciate the super chats on Sunday. Hot computer smell. Thank you for the super chat. This is from Sunday. I have sun a Sunday show on my channels. Sion says. Sion C says. I didn't think she did it on. I think she didn't do it on purpose, referring to Amber Geiger. This is an ongoing conversation about this white female officer who uh, mistook her neighbor for an intruder in her apartment when he was in his apartment and shot him. Some people think that she intentionally went there and shot him in a jealous rage and all kinds of conspiracy theories. She was not thinking, Sion says. She thought he was an intruder and she shot him before he beat her to it. She should have warned him. Yeah, shoulda, woulda, coulda. There's a whole lot of things she probably should have done. Skip says, this is from my snake fund. Spend it well. Thank you, Skip. And then he put out a, a, a white black power fist. <laughs> and uh, real fast, um, I talked about this Chrissy Ta Tegan, Tegan, the wife of John Legend. I just call her Chrissy Legend, kind of like how Jesse calls Beyonce Beyond Z, wife of Jay Z. Well, Giovanni A talked about Chrissy Legend, says Chrissy Legend is maybe a obsessed with President Trump. Hmm. Yeah, she wants a real man, not like John Legend. Andrew Campbell, thank you. Andrew Campbell, la la la, thank you. And Andrew Campbell gave a spoiler in about the movie Joker. Thank you, Andrew C Campbell. Appreciate. All the support, guys. So, that's that. Real fast, I have a map of this location because I might have said something incorrect, which wouldn't be the first time, right? About um, this whole situation with Turkey and Syria and the Kurds who are in Syria, I think, the northern part, which borders with Turkey and Iran. I mentioned Iran. Iran, whatever they're called. So, I'm looking at this, let me try to describe the map for people, um, pe for people listening and not watching. So, on the upper left side, which means northwest, right, is Turkey. Big old sideways California looking place. <laughs> and then you have Syria, which looks kind of like a North or South Carolina type of place, which, which is right off of the, right on the southern border of Turkey. Half of Turkey is like laying into the water somewhere. And then you have Syria down below, it's smaller. Maybe like a third of the size, a quarter of the size. And then you have Iraq to the right of Syria, which is east of Syria. And then further east of that is big old Iran. And Iran also touches like the right side of Turkey, which is the eastern border of Turkey. So I was thinking that Iran was doing tests uh, close to their Turkey border. Which I thought it was like all close to Syria, but it's not that close to Syria. <laughs> so they may not be that interested in this Kurdish whole fight. Whatever. But that's just a little, maybe a minor correction on my part. I don't know what's going on, nor do I care, nor probably do any, does anybody else. It's particularly the, the, particularly the people that are pretending to care. And that would be the media. And the rhinos and all them. Because I just don't buy these, that these people are genuine. Trump is genuine. He's like, you look at him, he, how he talks, and how he acts. Just genuine. Just, he's like a normal guy. He's not a politician, and he's not a media person. Those people tend to be fakes. Whether they can help it or not is, is another story. And so Trump is like, um, he's all, Turkey? You don't go too far. Otherwise, I and my unmatched wisdom and whatever, whatever he said, will completely destroy your economy or whatever he said. So he gave Turkey a warning, but he's giving them some leeway to do their thing. It's a, it's a disagreement between men. And it's a man's job <laughs> to, like, establish some type of order. And I don't know if Turkeys are, are, Turkey are good guys or bad guys. I know the Armenians don't like them because the Turkeys, the Turks genocided them like a hundred years ago, but didn't c genocide them completely, obviously, because they're still living. The Armenians, Christians, 
and Turks tend to be Muslims. But who are these Kurds? What are they? They're not Christians, I don't think. Why do we love them so much? They end up being terrorists as well. As some of them, anyways. So we don't know what's going on. But I'm definitely not buying this whole drama that's, that's coming out from the media. Let me give you an example of the drama that's coming out of the media. The Kurds betrayed. That's a Drudge headline. Which, I don't know if Drudge is, what side Drudge is on. I just think of him as just presenting what they're saying, right? The Jerusalem Post says, like, thieves in the night, U.S. forces withdrew from their positions. So they're mad. They're calling us, like, thieves in the night. Without explanation, processes, discussions, or leaving behind people to monitor the area. Never before has the U.S. worked with a group and then opened the skies to have another U.S. ally bomb and destroy that group. Meaning the tur- the- <laughs> the- I just called them turds. Meaning the Kurds. <laughs> so, there's a- there's a snack called cheese curds. But, I think that's spelled with a C. This is spelled with a K. Anyways, they're talking about Syria, Kurds, who supposedly fought ISIS for five years and helped us win. They better help us win, that's their area. Like, like it's really that much our fight. So, Trump de- be- defeated ISIS. There's a whole bunch of ISIS people in jail. And now it's the Kurds and Syria's and all their responsibility to handle it. It's not like Turkey wants ISIS to be running rampant either. So, whatever. But Lindsey Graham, who's a rhino, he's a pro-Trump rhino, like I said, I kind of like him. But he, I didn't like him before. He was anti-Trump, he was a rhino, he's pathetic. But then he, Trump kind of whips people into shape and forces them to function. So he was compliant, especially maybe after John McCain died. Because he seemed like he was good friends with John McCain, am I right? Or am I wrong? But Lindsey Graham is claiming this move ensures the re-emergence of ISIS and that we, the Trump administration, shamelessly abandoned Kurdish allies. I don't really buy that. It's not our problem. And the, and, uh, but I like Lindsey Graham for siding with Trump against the impeachment thing. And so when Iran launched, uh, launched this surprise drill on the Turkey border, I said, good, <laughs> whatever. You guys do your thing, fight it out. We're going to stay in America and fight it out. We have like a civil war in America between good and evil. And sometimes it turns violent, which, is, which is, means evil is winning, I guess. Whatever. So, um, it's just like this Hong Kong protest thing. This Hong Kong situation, where the Chinese are communists, or I heard Tucker Carlson call them fascists. <laughs> uh, because they're nationalists, right? So the Chinese are nationalists. But... Hong Kong guys were once controlled by Britain after the end of the Second World War. And then Britain let them go in 1997 or something. I was in high school. But I grew up with a bunch of these people that came here from Hong Kong, speaking Cantonese and all that stuff. Some of them went from Hong Kong to Vietnam and then to here. Churches brought them here and stuff. And then they come to our schools, get brainwashed into liberalism, and then vote against America. Vote for Democrats. Anyways, um, I don't really buy what we're told about the Hong Kong situation. Maybe some of the people are good. Some of the people that want independence from China, that's nice. I can definitely sympathize with that. But, like I said, I'm just not buying this media hype, because they're not about freedom. If they were about freedom, they'd be for the Second Amendment. They would be for the First Amendment. There would be for these social media companies letting people just talk instead of banning them, trying to do hit pieces on them. Oh, you should be banning these people. You should be banning PewDiePie. He did a a Hitler joke. (laughs) And that was the Wall Street Journal, who's supposed to be, they're supposed to be somewhat conservative or Republican friendly. They're rhino friendly. They're evil, just like the rest. Anyways, let me get to some calls, and then I'll get to this German guy. Interesting stuff. And I'll tell you a little bit about this National Coming Out Day that's coming up. 
how it started, it's not that, it's been around for a little while. Maybe older than some of you. Anyways, Markipa, out of <laughs> Oregon. Am I pronouncing your name right? <laughs> Markita. Markita, okay. I thought that, you know, that's a more common name, right, <laughs> than Markipa. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all right. Thank you, James. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for calling. Yeah. I just wanted to comment about this Kurdish Syrian thing. I uh, totally agree with the president to pull us out of there. Okay. And let them figure it out. Um, there's information that people need to research about the Kurds and that whole reason why they're there and all that stuff. Yeah. And, excuse me, I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Uh, so there's two factions of the Kurds. There's the YPG and the PKK. Okay. I've heard and of the some, PKK. They're, are they terrorists, like we're told? Yeah, apparently they have committed human rights watch has said that they have committed crimes against Turkish people. They've set off bombs in Turkey. They've um, killed Turks. They've killed Arabs. They like, they're just doing things that aren't good. So, and they're apparently communists. I think it, or the wow. YPG might be communist. Right. Yeah, no wonder the media is on their side. It, it is all making sense. But anyways. Well, exactly, you're exactly right. And pe but people don't research. They don't critically think. They don't research. Yeah. And they just go along with whatever the news is putting out there. And, yeah, there's a lot of rhinos that are against Trump's decision. And, well, I wonder why, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you know, um... You mentioned Human Rights Watch. They are a bunch of liberals and basically communists, too. They're socialists anyway, globalist socialists anyways. Yeah. So, they, I mean, I, they're a mixed bag. I can grant that they probably have some true factual information. And now and then they are against somebody who is bad. But they're also mm -hmm. against good people. <laughs> I think they've gone against Trump, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, anything oh, with human rights in it, you know that they're... Liberals, they're not for actual rights, but they do have some good information. So, no, I agree, yeah. I agree. And but for them to say that, yeah, there's a terrorist arm of the Kurds, and not all Kurds, yeah. of course, are part of this, but um, I, I can't remember the geography and how the Kurds ended up there, but they do, like you were saying about oil, or somebody called, yeah, in somebody about, called in and, and mentioned oil. I don't know. Yeah, and Anything I think about they that. do have a lot. They sit on land that is very oil rich, and okay. possibly that land possibly belonged to Syrians before the Kurds moved in. Or I don't know. I have to look it up again. But yeah, I don't know either. Um, I think it still belongs to Syria, but they let the Kurds be there or something. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, but I just wanted to say that yeah it's, you, you gotta research the Kurds and their factions and know what's really going on before judging President Trump's decision yeah or just trust Trump because you you can see him you can look at his actions and his words and watch him and compare him to the people that just look at the people you know they say that that's not a valid thing to just Look at the people, oh, Trump is probably always right, and, and the media is probably always wrong. But in general, like, you see how they're hyping it. They, it does definitely feels like propaganda when they're, when they're feeding it to us. They're putting it in these, like, um, sad and scary terms, making Trump look like the bad guy. That's like a... That, that is um, a sign that we're being pushed. We're, there's something is being pushed on us rather than just giving us objective, unbiased um, information. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I appreciate I, that. Marquita? No, I, I just totally, I'm a nationalist. I believe we need to take care of this country first. We yeah. don't need all these endless wars, all these conflicts that we're spending money on, and being the world police as yep. well. I don't agree with that either, so. 
I'll, I'll get off my soapbox. And right on. Get some more <laughs> That's how Trump talks, too. That's exactly what Trump has been saying. And he's yeah. been saying that a long time, by the way. So he's, he's consistent. And um, yep. I, hope yep, that he, he I hope that he's able to keep on. He's one guy that doesn't give up. He keeps on pushing until stuff gets done. And Absolutely. he has a lot of opposition at oh. every turn. Appreciate it, Marquita. Thank I you. Know. Thank you, James. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. All right. So, um, quick, quick note about so-called National Coming Out Day, NCOD. I looked it up. It has a whole Wikipedia page. And I did put this picture of Wikipedia's little side, you know, little details about National Coming Out Day in the main folder, Joel, that I drag into the drag the super chats in. You'll see National Coming Out Day, I think, something like that. Wikipedia. But it is the it is October eleventh of, of every year, I guess, observed. And it was founded in nineteen eighty eight. Look at this this like yellow figure looking like coming out of a dark closet or something. With a lime green wall and a purple floor. All dancing and happy. Propaganda. And it says NCOD logo designed by Keith Herring, something like that. And it is observed by the LGBT community, of which CNN is part of. Uh, part. <laughs> I said of twice. Type is a national and international, and observances are coming out. The, you observe it by coming out of what? Of uh, sanity, I guess. And it's related to the 1987 March on Washington, I guess, by the gays. And so it was founded by a male psychologist and founder of a personal growth wor- workshop. He died of AIDS. Robert Eichberg. And a lesbian political leader and activist who was the head of the National Gay Rights Advocates in Los Angeles. Her name was Jean O'Leary. Or is Jean O'Leary? She may be still living. But those two, uh, homosexual male, beta male, and lesbian female, beta female, founded this thing called National Coming Out Day. And CNN is sure to let you know that Friday is that. And so I'm sure to let you know that what CNN is telling us. And they're holding a town hall tonight with, um, don't watch it because Trump has a rally. Not that you would want to watch it anyways. But I think they're having Joe Biden, if he's doing okay, health-wise. Probably Elizabeth Warren. And, of course, that mayor, that homosexual mayor, who pretends to be a Christian. He's like a veteran or something. Pete Buttigieg. Those those three are going to be holding part of this LGBT, pro-LGBT, radical, homosexual town hall held by CNN. Now you know CNN is fake news. They're promoting wrong as right. Evil. They don't care about the, that. Speaking of, speaking of evil and the sex madness, Drudge reports that STDs are hitting a record high. I mentioned this yesterday, I think. U.S. News and World Reports. U.S. saw more than 2.4 million cases reported of chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis in 2018. And that is an increase from 2017. Don't be having sex like that. Um, That's a new report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. Nasty. Gonorrhea and cases of primary and secondary syphilis, which is the disease's most infectious stages, both reached their highest levels since 1991 last year. 1991 was three years after National Coming Out Day. So it was higher than even today with, um, with these diseases. 115,045 syphilis cases included over 35,000 cases of primary and secondary syphilis, which is the infectious stages, really infectious, which is a 14.9% uptick from 2017. 15% increase in one year. It's crazy. I wonder if that's immigrants. Anyways, there were more than 583,000 cases of gonorrhea. And these diseases are weird. I don't know what they are. I don't want to know. Whatever. A rate of increase of 5% from 2017. 
The rate of reported chlamydia cases rose 3% to total more than 1.7 million in 2018. Wow, that's nasty. Nearly two-thirds of which were among people 15 to 24 years old, the report shows. That's according... Oh, and then Atlantic has this, this um, report about, or this write-up about how syphilis snuck up on Americans. Basically, they, they got... became very trusting of people, I guess. They don't think that... I guess the media stopped hyping all the AIDS and all this stuff, so people got um, careless. Two-thirds of which, two-thirds of those chlamydia cases were people 15 to 24 years old. 1.7 million, that's, so we have, what, 300 million, right? 330 million or so? And so 1.7 million is, isn't that like 0.5%? Point, I don't know. It's, that's a lot. It's a lot of people. That's nasty. So, um, let me get to a couple more calls and then let me get to this. Uh, fixing the fake news about the white terrorists. Um, Sal, out of Denver, Colorado, has a tip for me, I think. Sal, how are you? All right, sir. I was just really shocked because uh, Todd Starnes has been fired from Fox News. Um, he's a very conservative. Yeah, I know. His book was called... I'm familiar with oh, him. you know the guy. Okay. Yeah, he's yeah. So Todd Starnes. Starnes is like a Christian guy. I'm hold him. Yeah. Yes, he's a Southern Baptist, right? And um, he's uh, um, uh, he's had a lot of great people on his shows, like former Governor Mike Huckabee, and it's just terrific people. Uh, uh, oh. uh, Pastor Robert Jeffers. Yeah, uh, so he's really great. I'll read this headline: Fox ho- Fox News okay. host Todd Starnes is out after suggesting Democrats worship the pagan god Molech. And that's according to the rap. He's a radio host and commentator. And what is that all supposed to mean? I'm I I, I know it means something. So the the the, the pagan understand the, what that means. The pagan god Molech is oh, associated with child sacrifice. So I mean maybe abortion. Oh, well, and all that stuff. Um, yeah, well they are kind of preying on the kids. I'm not saying yeah. he's wrong. Yeah, it's, it's, um... So, again, when you tell the truth, you get fired. Yeah. Unfortunate, man, and... (laughs) Excuse me. Trump went in on Fox News because they released this poll that says that he's, um, at 51%. And he's, he talked about, and, uh, Andrew Napolitano, he claims, according to President Trump, that Napolitano, Judge Napolitano, who's been like a decent guy on Fox, but then he's gone really anti-Trump, and he accused Trump of being being impeachable, so he said that Napolitano wanted to be, according to Trump, wanted to be um, a Supreme Court justice, (laughs) and Uh he said no, Trump turned him down, so he hasn't been the same since, been terrible ever since, according to Trump, and Trump also went after Shepard Smith. Who's a, who's a liberal. Oh, He's been yeah. on Fox News a lot. He's a real jerk. And then Donna Brazile, who gave Crooked oh. Hillary Clinton the debate questions and got fired from CNN. And I think that came right, out... Right, right. She got the, she got the question from the DNC to survey. Shepard Smith to give to Hillary. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Um, one other thing I should let you know before you move on is it's to my understanding that at the, the Wizards game, the people with the Free Hong Kong signs were from Hong Kong. News doesn't want to tell you that because Interesting. that would make them look credible. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what a mess. Appreciate well, that, Sal. We're going to fix it. We'll do our part to fix it. And yep. I'm, I'm glad you're here, man. I appreciate your great show. All right. Thank you, Sal. Good to hear from you. Sure. All right. Let me quickly, before I get to this, get to one more caller. Matthew out of Richmond, Virginia. First time caller, Matthew, how are you? I'm good, James. How are you? I'm fine, but no man is good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you said you're good. Anyways, what's up? Um, yeah, so uh, I know you talk about alpha males and beta males a lot, you and Jesse. Yeah. Um, can you define for me what an alpha male is, what a beta male is? An alpha, I can give you examples. I can okay. say an alpha male is President Trump, 
And a beta male is... Let's see... Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham is a beta male. Uh-huh. And he's like a nice okay. one. He's like a nicer one. A little bit nicer. I was gonna say, I was gonna say Adam Schiff. But we don't, I, I don't really listen to Schiff, so... I know that he is, I know he's evil. But I'm more familiar with Lindsey Graham. And I think you are probably too. Because Lindsey Graham has been around longer. And we've seen him, his ups and downs. Poor guy, but he is a beta male. So... Um, does that help? Yeah, but I, uh, no, it doesn't, because <laughs> you, you mentioned examples, but yeah. obviously in order for Trump to be a beta ma- or an alpha male and for Lindsey Graham to be a beta male, there has to be certain characteristics yeah. in order for you to say that they're alpha or beta, right? Yeah, okay, so I'll give you some characteristics. Um, Trump is strong in his personality and force and spirit. He doesn't back down. He stands on the truth, especially the truth as he knows it, right? He's, you know, he is a boomer, so a lot of people say that he's not for the truth about all things, and there, that is true. Um, for example, he was promoting the gay stuff at one point, and that's not a, an aspect of being a boomer so much, but it is a little bit. But it's also an aspect of having been in the, that world, you know, the, the entertainment world, New York, so he's like a New York liberal, and I guess that hasn't completely worn off yet. But maybe he was just winning his election, but I don't want to give him an excuse for that. But in general, like, he is the most consistent person who we've seen in, um, in the political world ever that, I've, that I know of. And so that's nice. And then Lindsey Graham, he is weaker pretty weak and he does kiss up to political correctness a lot more than Trump and he seems afraid at times and um, I know that he's defended what's right sometimes and that's good I appreciate that for example Kavanaugh and Trump but he just doesn't have that strength behind him and so that's what makes him a beta so uh, I mean, you, you probably know the history of Trump. He, most of his life, he was a liberal. So you're saying Trump is now an alpha, just like these these last few years, Trump has transformed into an alpha? Yeah, I, you know, I don't really pay attention to people's past all that much, unless they haven't changed, you know? So, you know, like, like mm-hmm. Tr- Obama has made no change. So I can reference his past because he has made no change. But uh, with Trump, stuff that happened in 2005 and stuff like that, whatever. And even that 2005 incident, the Access Hollywood tape, I really didn't care. But um, yeah, he's, yeah he, used to be, he used to be more beta. That's true. And he used to definitely was a liberal. Maybe he was kind of conservative right. on some things, but he was definitely like pro abortion, maybe even more pro gay than he is now. But, anyways, yeah. Uh, why? I would, I would tell you though, um, it's best not to like go by definitions and intellectualize things because that's not how you're going to figure, like, you can't really figure out life and figure out how to be a real man as God wants you to be. You have to just live it, you know? People, I think that's something that a lot of whites get sucked into and blacks that get into so-called education and Asians and maybe maybe all people that get into um, this knowledge thing where knowledge doesn't actually change you. Like we know, like a lot of us are conservatives because, because we know intellectually that conservatism is right. But in practice... We end up helping the liberals because we're angry, weak, pathetic, betas. And that only helps the liberal cause. For example, this guy that knew that all these people are anti, that a whole lot of people are anti-white. And so somehow he thought shooting up a synagogue would help that, help his cause. But he only helped their cause. He helped the anti-white cause, that is. So he was a, so Uh he was at heart just one of them. (laughs) He's 
working for their same team, the team of Satan. Does that make sense? Well, I I understand the the points that you're making, but how how can I make correct decisions without having fine intelligence and analyzing things properly? That, that's intelligence. That's different from being an intellectual. And you don't so necessarily you, have to. It doesn't take. It doesn't take a whole lot of analysis. You'll notice when people analyze things. For example, you have a conversation. Women do this, right? Right, or at least they admit that they do this. The, after they have a conversation, they analyze that conversation that they had with this person when it, and they put meaning into it that wasn't there. And that is something that um, intellectuals do. And that's not, that's not intelligent to do that. Because you don't know, but you're um, analyzing and putting meaning where it, does, where it actually doesn't exist. And going into the unknown, your imagination your um, memories and worrying about the future and stuff like that. That's what I mean by intellectual. And then they do, they do start to get their favorite facts that they like to cite, but the, sometimes the facts don't actually apply. The facts that they're citing don't apply. There are other facts that are actually towards, more towards the truth. And so you'll be focused on the wrong facts, thinking that you're living in the truth, but it's not actually truth that you're living in. You're living in your own understanding. You're not actually trusting in the Lord, as the Bible says. Because the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your might, or whatever, something like that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. So, you're wanting to lean on your own understanding because you are trained to be an intellectual, but that's not going to help you live right. Does that make sense? Well, I... I Okay, I I, um, I understand what you're saying. I, I think I understand what you're saying, but I, in order for you to even accept what the Bible says, you had to say, well, I'm not going to accept what the Quran says. I'm not going to accept what the Buddha says. No, I didn't have to say and all that my, stuff. And your intelligence said, okay, I'm going to accept what the Bible says, right? Yeah, in a sense, but to be honest, I never, I didn't even think about the Quran. I didn't think about Buddha. And the reason that I cite that verse is because that verse rings true. When I read the Bible, it, it rings true. It's like, it, um, you know, it's, I can recognize that, it, that it's true, I think. It sounds right. <laughs> anyway, Matthew, I gotta go. Because otherwise we're just gonna talk and talk and not live. You know what I mean? Because I get sick of these intellectualizing conversations about life. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. But thank you, man. I appreciate it. And do call again. Um, I feel like I've talked to you before, but you're no marked as a first timer. Anyway, he hung up. <laughs> um, let me, let me, I know I told you I was going to, I'm going to get to this. Hang tight callers. I am going to get to you. Let me just blow through this, fixing the fake news about the white terrorists. So I have this info on Stephen Bailet, whatever his name is, from Heavy. Heavy is a, um, not really a, so much of a reliable source, but they do have a lot of information. They are very liberal, a lot of the writers are, and they repeat this, you know, anti-white stuff, anti-Christian, anti-whatever, because they're, you know, they're liberals, they're trying to be mainstream or something. So this guy, Stephen Bailet, whatever his name is, is the suspect in a so-called anti-Semitic attack. It wasn't anti-Semitic. It was hateful, whatever, but it wasn't anti-Semitic. On a synagogue and a shooting at a Turkish kebab shop in Halle, or however you pronounce it, Germany, that left two people dead and two others injured October 9th, yesterday, 2019. And this German newspaper, Bild, has identified Bailet, Bailet, whatever his name is, as a neo-Nazi, that's how you know that it's fake news, too, because that's a popular label that I haven't heard any neo-Nazis call themselves neo-Nazis. So it's just an interesting side note. Um, he was streaming live video on Twitch for 35 minutes during the incident in East German City. So, a real quick side note about Twitch. Twitch is owned by Amazon. Yeah, see, you can see screenshots. This woman who's promoting a bunch of propaganda, but she's supposedly a journalist, probably. 
making false statements, by the way. I'm going to read some of her statements. But she's sharing tweets and um, sc screenshots, apparently, of the video and pictures of some of the weaponry that they, the cops found on this guy or in his car and maybe some elsewhere. But this guy is 27 years old. There were about 70 people at the synagogue that he tried to get into, but I don't, for Yom Kippur services. Yom Kippur is when the Jews are supposed to forgive one another and ask forgiveness from God, something like that, or ask for forgiveness from one another. Not something Jesse recommends, but they should apologize. But um, this guy was dressed in like a military or police style uniform, armed with multiple long rifles. The video showed he had ammunition and possible explosive devices in his car. So Twitch, Amazon owned Twitch. Banned Jesse, or suspended Jesse the first day that he <laughs> was streaming, a second time within a week, and then uh, maybe a third time within a couple of weeks, and then he was suspended for a month. When he finally came back, we're like, okay, we're not going to try to stream Jesse Lee Peterson's radio show. But had we been allowed to do that, maybe this guy, Stefan Bailet, whatever his name is, Bailet, would have come across it, and realize that he needs to forgive his mother and move out of his mother's house because he lives with his mother and he wouldn't have shot up the the Jews and the Turks in Germany, wh whatever they're doing in Germany and um, yeah, but Twitch doesn't like actual love or truth they call it hate speech and I'll get to more of what they said about so-called hate and extremists and violence but Twitch banned Jesse, but they're letting this guy play it. Maybe they shouldn't have banned Jesse. But they're Amazon owned. You know who owns Amazon is Jeff Bezos, who owns also the Washington Compost. Hat to Mark Levin. So, um, nasty people. Horrible people. But they're the soft evil, as opposed to the hard evil of like killing or mur mur uh, mass murder, open mass murder. Even the soft evil people are for killing, though. They're for, um, they are for killing the babies in the womb, and they're for, um, you know, wars, right? <laughs> Anyways, some of them are not, but they're pro-abortion. Molek, right? <laughs> like Tom Stark, Todd Starks, Starnes said. So, um, he posted a manifesto that was spread by so-called white supremacists, meaning... Uh, probably, I don't think that they're white supremacists. I haven't heard any white, so-called white supremacists call himself or herself that. Maybe a couple. On the messaging app Telegram. In the PDF, Baliet said that his mission was to, quote, kill as many anti-whites as possible Jews preferred. According to so-called extremist researcher Rita Katz, whose tweets I was just showing, Joel was just showing, She's of the Sight Intelligence Group, it's more like Sight Intellectual Group, unintelligent. Yom Kippur is Judaism's holiest day, blah, blah, blah. Prior to his attempt to enter the synagogue, he addressed the camera during the live stream and made so-called anti-Semitic, which don't exist, remarks in English. Oh my gosh, and I have some, I have some of these, like, fast facts from uh, Heavy, real fast, and then I'll get to the callers. So, the, fir the first fast fact, Baliet, who called himself Anon in the video, short for anonymous, I guess, expressed so-called anti-Semitic views, blaming Jews for the world's problems, and they make sure to say this, and falsely denying the Holocaust occurred. Why do they have to put falsely in there? I feel like I'm being, um, I feel like I'm being, what is this called? Indoctrinated. I feel like I'm being um, given a whole lot of propaganda. Why did they have to push that falsely in there. They want to make sure that you know that this Holocaust happened, blah, blah, blah. It's very suspect when they do that stuff. He is from Saxony-Anhalt, the German state that includes the city of Halle, whatever, where he lived alone with his mother. And this guy's 27. As Jesse would say, beta. So let me just quickly show you this woman, Rita Katz of the so-called SITE Intelligence Group, S-I-T-E Intelligence Group. Um, she says, the similarity between this live video and the New Zealand attackers underscores that these are not isolated 
attacks by people merely holding similar beliefs. Today's attack is another installment from a global terrorist network linked together via online safe havens, much like ISIS, so she claims. Um, so she's assuming that these are a terrorist network, but I will say that some, that these are more like lone wolf attacks. Yes, they do agree with each other. Sometimes they call them heroes and stuff like that. So in that sense, I guess you can, you can make that claim. But these are call, call, what you call copycat crimes. A copycat crime is kind of like the hashtag MeToo movement, where these women make the, the crime of false accusations against the men or, or malicious, vengeful exaggerations about what the men supposedly did to them. And gays do that too. And so that's a copycat crime when you, um, oh, you're inspired by this thing that made a big splash in the media and you want to do the same thing. And so this... This woman's kind of nuts, in my opinion. She is probably anti-white. And, well, let's see what else. Was there anything else? Was there anything else I haven't shown yet? Um, he was unable to get into the synagogue because, it's gate with, uh, because of its gate. That's good. But then he shot at pedestrians and people at a tur Turkish kebab shop. And according to that Build newspaper, which is liberal, um... His father, who was not named, this boy ha did have a father. I call him a boy, but he was 27, a beta male. Told uh, Bill, the newspaper, that his son was an angry young man who was, quote, not at peace with himself or with the world and always blamed everyone else for his problems. Yep. Sound like the blacks, sound like the whites, sound like the, um, the uh, illegals, sound like the uh, gays. The LGBTs that you're going to be hearing coming out today. So, that's that. I just wanted to correct, because they keep on pushing this, calling it anti-Semitic, calling it uh, neo-Nazi, calling it white supremacist. And um, in reality, he was, just a, he was a white terrorist who um, had, felt the need to commit terrorism in his own country, Germany. Crazy. And... Uh, probably some of his complaints weren't wrong, but his actions were. So, anyways, let me get to Jay out of California. Jay, how are you? Hello. Hey, good morning. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> Go for it. No, this is Je this is Jerry. Oh, Jerry. <laughs> right on. Uh, I was uh, I was recently calling. Uh, I'm talking. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah speak up for me. Comment. Yeah. Yeah. I just want I just want to make a comment about uh the increasing um cases of chlamydia and you know the S T D Yes. Yeah, uh, I'm afraid I'm to look it up. <laughs> I I yeah. I I'm actually I'm uh, I'm a nurse. Okay. And there is a lot of you know, cases in our actually this is this is not a medical medical hospital, this is a behavioral hospital, like uh it, when you're having uh, in a treatment, like an addiction, something like that. Okay. You, so yeah, you're a nurse um, at a behavioral hospital. Yeah. Helping people and, with addictions. Yeah. And most of them, like, it's like schizophrenia. Okay. And addiction in general. So, yeah, it, that's true. Um, mostly they take in, um, you know, antiviral drugs. You know, have you seen those uh, commercials on TV? They're promoting this medication at the same time. You know, I'm not against the oh. case, but it couldn't help myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you're talking about those, pharma. those, yeah, those, those drug commercials where they yeah. they list a whole lot of horrific side effects all fast after a nice, yeah. beautiful commercial. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, and then and then what I'm talking about is the antiviral, the anti-HIV medication. Okay, and. Most of these drug farmers are, you know, the the ones that you know. I don't want to say anything names and names of that. Okay, but sure. But you know what I mean, right? All right, yeah. So, yeah, and um, it, it's so sad, mostly in California, because, you know, um, they're promoting um, homosexuality. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not against with these people, but, they're, you know, they act. Right. You know what I mean? And 
going to make a comment to on um, you know quote unquote neo Nazis. I, I don't know. When I was growing up, you know uh, the history, they called it Nazi. Right. But right now they have. There's a lot of uh, variation of that. Yeah. Uh, ultra ultra nationalist. Am I correct? Ultra nationalist neo Nazis and whatever they come up to, and they're promoting it on TV, in which is most of the people in the fallen state. Listen to our media, you know. The, right. The, you know? And they don't know better than to distrust it, oddly enough. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then one more thing about Donald, uh, President Donald Trump, and, you know, Chrissy Teigen, I don't want to open it, but I just want to make a comment. Chrissy Legend? Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. Chris, Chrissy Legend. He, he like. I mean, she likes to, uh, to uh, say something bad about Trump, but he, he's uh, so... Uh, cohesive on on him, you know what I mean. It's like a Stockholm syndrome, but in a different way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is, <laughs> yeah. if you don't like the president, stop, stop uh, saying something like that. You know, you're just promoting him. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> hate, it's like the people who hate watch the show. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> uh, they're, they're crazy. You know. <laughs> yeah. Totally. <laughs> if you really don't like. Or don't tolerate the the person, or, or you know, the thing. Why you keep always saying bad things? You're just promoting it. Yep, totally. And You're right about they that, just Jerry. Can't, yeah, they, they just can't uh, handle his uh, masculinity, which is correct. You know, he, you don't have to be perfect. You have to be a good man. You know. What I mean? Yeah. Right you on. Know, like uh, I like I, I like Trump. I like Trump. He's not perfect. You know, sometimes we don't, we, we don't. Uh, Agree what what he's doing or what he says. Yeah, but I love him. Yep, and I'm very glad that he's the president, not Hillary. I was I was uh, Hillary uh, supporter, not a supporter supporter. You but voted for? When I saw, mm -hmm, when I saw what he's doing, then I mean, excuse my French, but it's it, it's uh, good for America. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good, that's nice that you woke up from that because he's yeah. just being himself, yeah. and that's. And he's, he, and it, it shows anybody who's like somewhat able to see, you know, somewhat like most of us are blind, right? But, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's so apparent that he loves America. So, yeah. yeah. Anyways, man, and, appreciate that. Yeah. All right, man. Have a good day, sir. All right. You too. Take care, Jerry. Keep, keep doing really good. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Scott out of Colorado. How are you, Scott? Let me try to get to my calls, the rest of my calls. Hey, James, how are you doing? Fine. How are you? Excellent. I'm doing great. Snowing, plowing, shoveling, making that money. Wow, nice. Right on. Colorado. Busy. That's cool. Yep. Oh, I heard that there's crazy storms somewhere. I don't know if that's hit Colorado. In the mountains, they're getting in pretty good, about eight inches. We've received two to three inches, but most of it's melting off because we've been having 90-degree temperatures for the past, the whole summer. I've, I've been reading a whole lot of speculation in the news, you know, reading, like, impeachment stuff, stuff that may not ever happen. I should get back to well, reading the weather. Weather is more fake happening. news than fake news. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the original I fake could, news. Yeah, I, <laughs> but I'm not talking weather. about weather predictions. I'm talking about stuff that actually has happened. So, whatever. <laughs> but you're, you make a good point. Anyways, go on. So, I mean, you were touching earlier on the whole homosexual agenda, starting with these two knuckleheads, the guy who um, got AIDS, and then uh, the, the beta lesbian. Right. And uh, look, look how far they've been able to push their agenda. It's like that uh, yeah. thing. The, uh, the thing for evil to gain hold is for good men to do nothing. Yep, that's what's been happening. It's it's a perfect example of good men doing nothing. It's basically the good men are not as good as they think they are, or as we think they are. I remember in middle school where these these two beta males led the whole procession of the school on break out to French kiss each other. <laughs> I remember how disgusted and revolting it was to me. What but year was that? In a world or this, decade? This was in a. This was in San Diego, California, where I went to uh, Black Mountain Middle School. In the in the eighties? No, no, this was in the nineties. Wow, um, I'm I'm a year older than you, so okay. I graduated in ninety nine from high school. But uh, me too. Now they've, I mean, 
the rainbow was supposed to originally be God's promise for him not to flood the world again, even though we deserve it. <laughs> right. And uh, the reality is, is they're more than happy to live in uh, sin. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're proud of it. And it's, they're promoting pr- pride in it, but they're not proud. That's why they have to pretend that they're proud. It's so wrong. You know, it's like asking somebody, are they Christian? And most people hesitate because, look, I mean, Christians now accept homosexuality because it's like, well, I don't want to be hurt anybody's feelings. Yeah. They've, they have a, they've accepted a false imitation of love, uh, and they falsely call real love hate. That's why many of them don't like Trump or Jesse. And, yeah, you hear them call into the show and accuse Jesse of hate. And so, yeah, appreciate that, Scott. They're able to manipulate our conscience, and, you know, it was my daughter's fifth birthday a couple days ago, and uh, her aunt is thinking she's gay, so she shows up with her girlfriend and their little boy, and, you know, the first thing I thought was, where's that kid's dad? Yeah. And further from there, I remember when we were all celebrating and all the cupcakes were out, I saw another uh, alternative lifestyle couple and their three kids in there, and I called them over, and I'm like, cupcakes for everybody. Because the most important thing for me is to have additional kids to celebrate my daughter's birthday. Had nothing to do with their uh, guardians. Wow. So, I mean, Jesse's right. And uh, thankfully, all you guys are there working with him. I mean, there's something significantly evil about hate. Yeah. I appreciate that, Scott. Thank you, man. Have a blessed day, James. You as well. Thanks. Skip out of Augusta, Georgia. How are you doing, Skip? Hey, James. I'm doing okay. How are you doing? Fine. Lay it on me. We okay, got a couple minutes. I, I really think he was up to this yesterday with Jesse asking me if I love Jews or not, but I'm not even going to get into that. I'll, I'll tell you I wasn't, and you can believe me or not, but I wasn't. Oh, I believe you. You say you didn't do it, you didn't do it. Yep. But of course I, of course I love the Jews. If right on. For the Jews, if it wasn't for the Jews, we wouldn't have the Federal Reserve. We wouldn't have pawn shops. We wouldn't have such a big porn industry and industry, and we wouldn't have Hollywood out of control like it is. All right. Of course, I love. So of course, I love them Jews. Yep. All right. And um, anything else? You wanted no, I to. I just want to. I just want to let you know I do love them Jews. You wanted to talk about that killer, the white terrorist who was mad at the Jews. No, I, I, I don't even know much about that. Oh, okay. All right. W- did you hear my re- little report about it? Yeah, I listened to it. Uh, anything it you disagreed with? I don't agree with anything that it did. Um, no, 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 with, with my report. Well, to be honest, I wouldn't have listened, James. Oh, no, <laughs> no problem. I understand. Yeah, but those aren't, those aren't reasons to love Jews. <laughs> Those are reasons well, no. to those are reasons to disagree with them. Well, I know it. I'm just trying to be a little bit funny with you, James. You're being you subversive. I, oh, I don't know. I'm just jiving. We, I'm just being, I'm just being a snake in the grass. <laughs> that's all right, snake. I mean, that's all right, Skip. All right. Have a good. <laughs> Everybody's have a, good a day, snake James. until they're born again. All right, Skip. Take care, man. Bye. Bye. You know, you can't just blame the people that are pushing the evil because, yes, there are a lot of Jews that are pushing the stuff that Skip pointed out. But you also have to uh, blame the followers. And you have to overcome being angry at both of them. Because we we do get mad at them. I I mean, I guess I'm lumping myself in with y'all. And uh, that's not going to make us win. Calling it out is not the only thing. You do call it out, but you also have to have, like, the real kind of love like Trump has, Jesse has, and Jesus has. I say has, because he lives, right? Alright, guys. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow for Get It Off Your Chest Friday, and we have some exciting things coming up for the Fallen State, and Church with Jesse Lee Peterson every Sunday. Subscribe to Bond or Building the Man. It's an excellent channel. Um, was there anything else? I think that's it for now. Anything I missed, I'll make sure to tell you tomorrow on on the Hague Report, 9 a.m., Monday through Friday, and Sunday. Take care, guys.